Hello, Indianapolis. Welcome to the home of an American president. Yes, I'm here to do another president's house. Hello world, it is your Uncle Heavy. Today I'm on location in Indianapolis, Indiana. Wait, what? Yes, we got bored, hopped on a plane, came to Indiana. This behind me is the Benjamin Harrison house. I'm here to do yet another president's house. So, no idea what's going on in there as per usual. So, Michelle's getting us some tickets. Let's go see what kind of trouble we can get into. Do come along. So this is downtown Indianapolis. We're gonna go somewhere kind of cool here today. Yeah, I've never driven through, uh, never driven through Indianapolis before. I think we found the right place. Yeah, some nice buildings here downtown. And uh, there's the house right there. It's getting a little panoramic of the local area here. You can see Indianapolis right there across the highway. Got a replica of the Declaration of Independence here. The Constitution, the Constitution is represented here as well. And the Bill of Rights. Some sort of book of dedication here. Although it's kind of hard to see with the light post shadow there. This looks like it's a presidential promenade. And walking down this path towards the house, we've got all the presidents listed in chronological order. Madison's there, Monroe. Been in Monroe's house, didn't get a chance to vlog that. Been at John Quincy Adams' house as well, didn't get a chance to vlog that. Haven't done Andrew Jackson yet, but we'll get there. And look at this, we've got Van Buren. Now I know if you've been watching my vlog, you saw I did the Van Buren house. I'm not gonna do them all, but you can see they're all lined up down and coming on back again. Looks like Michelle, the lovely Mrs. Heavy, got us our tickets and we're gonna find out what we're gonna see in here. Nice shot of the property here in the front. There's the building. Now you watch them to go through doing all these intros and all the surrounding area and they're gonna be like no videos inside. There's this gigantic storybook about a goat in the White House. Ooh, it's kind of violent. Old Whiskers escapes. It's all wet. For you tree enthusiasts, this one in the front of the house is over 300 years old. Looks like the coach house in the back here is the visitor center. Let's uh, go check this out. There's a little museum going on in here. Renovations. Nice little grandfather clock. Looks like they actually have a dog license that belonged to him at one point, 1896. Oh, yeah, it definitely was the coach house here, because you can see there's a one horse open sleigh and a horse and buggy cart. I'll show you a lot of examples of that when we get into the dining room. Room. Wow, the actual rug. Even our light fixtures are original to when the house was built. That's an original light fixture. It was gas at one time. And this is Mrs. Harrison's piano. It was actually a gift to them while they were in the White House. So this piano has actually played in the White House. But look at this beautiful front parlor. Look at that. And the real hallmark of a Victorian home, the twin parlors. Mm -hmm. your hairline. Working with Gina hair Bone here. Oh. There is no speaker in that. There's no amplification device in it. They designed it all naturally. It sound that way. Huh. 
beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The, the tour guides are all volunteers of the foundation here. Uh, we don't have a script for this. What we do is we shadow other tour guides until we feel comfortable in that cane. Oh, that's beautiful. And we have no idea who carved it. Hmm. Yeah. Do we know what they get, who gifted it to him? No, we do not. But whoever carved it was a better carver than Speller. I was gonna Misspelled say. three presidents' names. <laughs> Call it a bully chair. I, I, I guess because the frame's entirely made out of longhorn cattle horns, and that is a Texas bobcat hide covering the cushion there. Mm. A gift, believe it or not, from a Texan. Mm. A German cabinet maker living here in Indianapolis that the federal government was trying to deport back to Germany. Harrison wins the case for him. He's so happy, not always if he has legal feet, he builds in that bookcase. Very nice. And Harrison's great grandfather, Signer. In fact, family's so excited about him being that they refer to him as the Signer from then on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, only served 32 days, but he has a presence, had a presence here, and given a piece of paper, a commission signed by the Secretary of War and the President of the United States. Installed one of the very first telephones in Indiana. Wow. Oh, it didn't ring a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this room uh, really pulls the average down as far as original items uh, in the house. Uh, almost nothing in here is a Harrison item. This house was lived in until 1959. The Hoosier cabinet, uh, very popular. Because, uh, well, you know, today modern kitchens have cabinets and counter space. Didn't back then, so uh, something like this before you put everything in one place, very popular. When they stripped this off, they discovered somebody had left one of those irons in a scar store. That would have been covered for years. So it was kind of a little, little bonus. She hand painted everything in these lower three tiers in a curio. Wow. Our coffee and tea, the silver service here. This is, come on up close and then look straight up. You can see the spiral all the way. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful shot right there. Look at this beautiful piece. It's like a fire nozzle and this railing. Oh, it's beautiful. Hello there. So, this is Mary, the daughter from the first marriage. This is her room. Lived here about four years. Uh, then they had two kids, Benjamin Harrison McKee, that was his high chair down in the kitchen. Uh, we have a lot of her uh, clothing items and accessories in the Harrison collection. Llama fur, you said? Llama. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And she was the only person in the house who had her own dressing room. Uh, and all of his kids and all of his grandkids have slept in that covered baby bed. That is Caroline's dress for him there. And we think that she probably made and sewed that dress that's in the portrait. That is Caroline Harrison. Remember when I told you she's five feet tall? I'd say that's a larger than life portrait. That's all inlay. Isn't that unbelievable? It's beautiful. Yeah. But scenes. Yeah. So main bedroom here. Uh, now this house was finished in 1875. There was a flush toilet behind that door. 1875. Everybody else has got outhouses. He had an indoor water closet. Not going on a headboard. Yeah, that's a gorgeous headboard. Yeah. 1897. Daughter Elizabeth from that second marriage, born in this bed. Uh, but he got the flu, and within about two days, it turned into a very serious case of pneumonia. Uh, he was not ill more than about seven or eight days before he died. Uh, family members were rushing to try to get to his bedside. Did not make it. So only 67 years old would have been uh, 68 the following August. Died here. Now, I mean, you know, lifestyle, diet, uh, jobs, activity levels were, you know, so much more than today. Most people would not have to exercise. So they sold this to the Sears catalog for $75 with from that second marriage. And the portrait on the wall, that is her when she was 28 years old. Wow. Again, this railing is yeah. incredible. Now, except the thing that gets me is the way it ends here. I mean, it's just eh, in the there's, there's just like that, we're I done. I thought there had been a plate or something. Sure. Oh, and he says the ballroom. 
Yeah. Now this uh, this has been hugely renovated here. Uh, until May, this here was two office cubicles and a dingy little library in here. And over here we have some of Benjamin Harrison's furniture from his law office. We even have one of the original shingles, the law office signs there. B. Harrison, pretty easy to figure out who that is. Mm -hmm. but no relationship to the Harrison family, named after the president, uh, and does become Benjamin Harrison's law partner. So he uh, pushed through the House of Representatives what was called the Lodge Act, which would have made it, say, law that, that would be troops stationed down the south. What do you think? Maybe a size four would be comfortable on that? Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. So I think we'll end this vlog in this beautiful rose garden, which is kind of cut down for the winter, but we've got this one last, one last flower here. Coming to say goodbye. That was a pretty cool experience. It was a very interesting place to visit. Definitely. Well, that's going to do it for this vlog. I hope you really, really enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned. I've got lots more adventures coming up very soon. Till then, signing off from Indianapolis, Indiana. Bye-bye.